right, so if we're going to simplify this, the only way we can add or subtract any of these radicals together, at least in terms of combining them together, is if you have the same kind of radicals. So you guys start by breaking down your roots. Like over here, I see a square root of 98. I've got a perfect square that I know goes into 98 being what? 49. So 49 times 2 gives you that 98, right? If you take the square root of 49, we know that's 7. We know that 7 is coming out of the root, getting multiplied to that 4. So we have 28 outside the root, 2 remains underneath the root. We're subtracting, it says 3 root 72, so I'm thinking of the largest perfect square that goes into 72, which is what? 36. So this is 36 times 2. I'm taking the square root of 36, which is 6. I'm multiplying it to the 3 in front, getting 18. So 2 remains underneath the root. We're subtracting 18 root 2 there. Square root of 20. Got 4 times 5, right? So square root of 4, 2. Multiply the 8 in front. That's 16. 5 is left over. 16 square root of 5. The last one here, subtracting the 3 root 75. 75 we know is 25 times 3. Take the square root of 25, which is 5, multiply it at 3 in front, at minus 15, square root of 3. Putting together what we can at this point, we've got some like root 2s. So I'll take my 28 in front of this one, my 18 in front of this one, subtract them. Got 10 root 2. The rest of these are not like radicals, so they're just kind of coming along. And we've got our answer. That's our simplified radical form. Okay, so if you think of the strategies we use here to break down square roots, as we change to other indices with our roots, say cube roots next, you know, how would I approach a problem like this one? Transferring over to cube roots, got to start thinking in terms of perfect cubes. If you're not used to thinking in terms of perfect cubes, maybe you generate a list off the side. Maybe you do something like, okay, two cubed, I know that's eight, so eight's a perfect cube. Three cubed, I know that's 27, so 27's a perfect cube, and so on. All right, four cubed. Four cubed, 64. I start by testing some of these values out as possible factors for these numbers that are contained under these cube roots. I just start dividing them in, see what works. Let's see if we can come up with some factors we can play with where we can take the cube root of at least one of them. Okay, the first one, 24, 8 times 3, we're choosing 8 because 8's a perfect cube, right? If you're taking the cube root of 8, you get 2. 2 pops out, joins the 5. You've got 10 cube root of 3. Minus cube root of 54. Perfect cube that goes into 54. What is it? What is it? 27. Okay. Kind of sounded sound like 8 there, but I was going to go with 27 myself. So you get 27 times 2. You take the cube root... 27, which is 3. 3 gets multiplied to 2 in front, got 6. Got 2 left over, so it's cube root of 2. Okay. On the last one, we're adding on. Okay, perfect cube that goes into 3,000. That'd be like 1,000, like right? Can you take the cube root of 1,000? What's the cube root of 1,000? 10. So if you take the cube root of 1,000, which is 10, 10 pops out. There's nothing in front, so we're technically multiplying to 1 there. You've got 10 cube root of 3. Join your uh, like radicals here. Got a couple of them. 
We're adding them together in this case. So we've got 20 cube roots of 3 minus 6 cube root of 2. That's clever. So the decision we have made, we have decided we're going to do something with this root to clear it. And we're going to multiply by 2 root 2. I like it. If we do that, the root 10 we have not considered yet. This first fraction, you've got a 10 root 2 over. The idea being in multiplying by 2 root 2 is these root 2s become 2, right? Multiply to that 2, which becomes 4. And that's convenient if you want to combine your fractions here. Because now you've got a common denominator. You've got root 10 still waiting its turn. We happen to have the same radicals up here. So it's 9 minus 1. 9 root 2 all over 4. Okay, got to multiply the root 10 through. So that's over 1, right? Meaning, can only multiply my roots across this numerator. It'd be 9 square root of 20 all over 4. Square root 20 breaks down to what? Okay, so that's 4, 5 here. Take your square root of 4, which is 2. Multiply to 9 in front, 18. Square root of 5, all over 4. Almost there. What's left? Okay, common factor of 2 is shared between 18 and 4. So you got 9 root 5 over 2. Well, I've got, a, I've got a method I'm going to try up here, which is not different than anything we've just discussed. But I'd encourage you guys to try it a different way to see if we uh, arrive at the same answer. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this square root of 5 over the square root of 3, break it up. I bet I have to write out this step, but I'm just understanding I'm breaking up the idea. On the inside, I've got this 4 square root of 3, which is technically over 1, minus 11 over square root of 3. I'm going to distribute. We didn't do this on the last one. I want to try it on this one. If I distribute through, you've got a 4 times, it'd be 5 times 3 under the root, 4 square root of 15. That's all over square root of 3 minus, we've got square root of 5 and 11 here, so it's 11 root 5 over square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is 3. Now, just as we can multiply square roots together, assuming the values under the square roots are positive, we can divide them as well. Notice, you've got the square root of 15 over the square root of 3. Isn't that just square root of 5? Whoa. Yeah, that just happened. So you got 4 square root of 5 minus 11 square root of 5 over 3. So what's the problem? Okay, I've got to find a common denominator. So we want this to be over 3. If we want that to be over 3, we multiply the top to 3. That means you're multiplying that 4 by 3. So in the end here, we can create one fraction. In fact, we've got like roots on top. 12 minus 11 would give you one root 5 left all over 3. And we're going to square it. That's the approach here, yes. OK, use the idea of the factors, maybe. We see 4 root 5 minus 2 squared. We know that means 4 root 5 minus 2 times 4 root 5 minus 2. 
So we could write it out, multiply it out, or we could just remember how to square a binomial expression. Either way should work. This one's kind of complex, so foiling probably makes sense. You multiply the first terms here, 4 root 5, 4 root 5, you've got 16 times 5, right? Because the roots cancel out. 16 times 5 is 80. All right, outside terms. Outside and inside terms will be the same, right? So on the outside, if I multiply, I've got 4 times negative 2, negative 8. So that's negative 8 root 5. You've got a negative 8 root 5 on the inside, so that's negative 16 root 5. Multiply the last. Negative 2 times negative 2. Easiest one in there. So answer becomes 84 minus 16 root 5. That's it.